And joining us now, Liz Smith, a Democratic strategist and was part of the rapid response team. She was director for President Obama's 2012 campaign. And Leslie Sanchez, a CBSN political contributor and Republican strategist. She joins us from Los Angeles. Leslie, I want to start with you. Trump noticeably restrained, talking about unity. Imagine that. What do you make of his response? I think it was a very measured response, quite appropriate. The only word I would have added to there is that he, we were looking for justice, justice whether it be uh, in inner city communities and among African Americans or justice certainly for law enforcement. And that's really the tone of action that I think people on both sides of the aisle are looking for. But overall, it's exactly the right tone. Liz, both of the campaigns canceled events on Friday following the shooting in Dallas. How is gun violence and these ongoing shootings that happen so often going to affect the elections in November? Well, you know, I do think it was appropriate that both campaigns canceled events. I remember when I was working for President Obama in 2012, uh, in the wake of the Aurora shootings, both President Obama and Mitt Romney ceased campaigning for a week. Um, just so that the nation could grieve without partisan politics getting in the way. Um, but to your point about how we're going to deal with gun violence and, and deal with the politics of it, um, look, we've seen so many mass shootings recently, and we've seen we've had so many moments where people have said, this is really the turning point. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hopeful that this can be a turning point, but I'm not optimistic that it, it really will be. Um, you know, this really was kind of an emotional abyss for our nation. You know, we saw the deaths of these two men apparently without cause at the hands of police officers. We saw five police officers gunned down. And if this doesn't prompt our politicians to act, then shame on them and shame on us for not for not getting them and not forcing them to act here. Um, so, look, I think right now what we've seen from uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump is um, a lot of uh, kind of grieving language, a lot of rhetoric. We haven't seen a lot of prescriptions, and I think we're going to see that more in the coming days. Liz says we haven't seen many responses to this, much action. Leslie, what can any of these candidates offer come November that could really make a difference in this discussion? You know, I think a really important point to keep in mind is that this is a call for more, uh, an end to gun violence. I think there's a fundamental agreement on that. I disagree with Liz in the sense that I think Speaker Ryan has done a very good job of stepping forward, talking about justice, talking about getting some good regulation, enforcement of gun re regulation, but also looking at the laws on the books and making sure it's fair, protects due process. But really, are we, do we have a sensible approach to that? And people are coming together and trying to find ways to work together. I also think when the president was talking about this before, he said this is not the 1960s. There was a really important point there. It's not 1965 in Los Angeles, 1967 in Newark and Detroit. Uh, he said he's going to bring and convene people together to have a national conversation, maybe like a Kerner commission like you had under President Johnson. But I think he could have gone farther. He should have said something like that. And that's the opportunity for both Trump and Clinton. It's not just a convening of ideas. It's really action. These commissions and these reports, which that went back almost a half century ago talked about a black and white America and two different societies. There is some there are some serious issues in communities of color and how law enforcement is having to deal with these issues and it's escalating. President so Obama making the point actually talking that violent crime is actually at the lowest that it's been since the 1960s. But I want to pivot here for a second here. Clinton, Hillary Clinton sat down with Scott Pelley Friday and Scott asked about FBI Director James Comey's statements that Clinton was careless in her use of handling of a private email server. Let's take a listen. Were you extremely careless? No, I was not, and neither were the 300 people who uh, sent me that material, Scott. You know, the vast majority of the material was sent to me, it was forwarded to me from professionals, from people, as I said, who had a lot of experience uh, dealing with classified material. I do not think they were careless. Liz, will this defense work for Hillary Clinton? No, I don't think it will. And I think she's really lost the trust argument with the American people. And I, I, st I, it makes me cringe to see her still being so defensive over this. I think she needs to apologize. She needs to say that she was careless. I, there is no doubt that she was careless. Um, but I think that generally, overall, that the decision not to indict her, not to you know, seek any charges against her was good news for her campaign, good news for her candidacy. But 
it, it's going to be really hard for her to regain the American people's trust here. Leslie, I want to talk about Donald Trump here. A lot of buzz, especially as the president happened to be up there, um, uh, talking about a potential VP pick. Very interesting one, I've got to say. Retired General Michael Flynn, a lot of people saying that he could potentially be the next vice president pick for Donald Trump. In fact, Bob Costa from the Washington Post saying that apparently he's running around in the headquarters saying uh, Trump Flynn, Trump Flynn. How does that sound? Trump Flynn, Trump Flynn. What do you make of this? This is a man who actually butted heads with President Obama. He was the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency from 2012 to 2014. He's got impressive credentials. Director of Intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Central Command, the NATO mission, Afghanistan. He's been to Iraq and Afghanistan. Leslie, what could this mean for the campaign? I think what it does is it shows a very strong contrast coming off a week of the uh, 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 director Comey's report um, and, and kind of this carelessness of Hillary Clinton, especially on national security matters. It creates a very stark contrast if you add somebody like General Flynn, even if he just puts it in the conversation right now. He's somebody that sounded the alarm for against uh, the alarm of, of the rise of global jihadist threat globally. He, he certainly had contrast and, and was a critic of President Obama, and he's a Democrat. It talks about his bar bipartisan approach. I think there's a lot to be made of this um, media opportunity. We're going into the Republican convention. He has a book, General has a book coming out next week. Um, so it is this national security front, front and center, um, and that looks like it's shaping the narrative at least for the next 10 days. Liz, this man has, could be a double threat. He's got security credentials. He is independent in his thinking, a lot of people say. And here's the big surprise. He's actually a Democrat. Well, he's a registered Democrat. Let's uh, let's add in that caveat. But not a Republican. Oh, hey, right. I, look, I, people ultim people vote for presidents. They don't fight, vote for vice presidents. And I think that's what that's the main thing to keep in mind here. It's obvious why Trump is looking to a general because people see him as someone they can't trust on national security. He's unpredictable. He doesn't choose his words carefully. Um, and so ha putting a general on the ticket would give the appearance of having a steady hand. I don't think it matters. I, I really think that the whole, you know, veep stakes is generally but pretty But could this overrated. matter to independents who are not happy with Hillary Clinton, weren't so thrilled with Trump, but could this push them over to the side and help them win those in the category that are undecided? Uh, look, look, if he gets Donald Trump to, you know, start choosing his words more carefully and to become a more serious person, maybe, but I, I really don't see it making that big of a difference. Um, but it's it's definitely, it's interesting. He, he, Donald Trump is always keeping it interesting. He certainly does. He certainly does. Well, Liz Smith, Leslie Sanchez, we want to thank both of you for joining us today. Okay.